morning. Welcome to Grace for today. Blessings, everybody. God bless you. We are grateful for another day that the Lord has made, and we choose to rejoice and to be glad in it. My prayers of the Lord will bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you. We are eternally grateful for all that the Lord has done. He remains the faithful God. Amen. We're going to get started because I, I want to continue with our study. We're going to begin at Exodus chapter 7, verse 16. For those of you who are uh, following along in the scriptures, but we want to get started there. God bless you. Let's look and see what the Lord is doing and how God is continuing to move in Egypt. Here, he says, uh, and the Lord says, God bless everybody. Oh, let me move this. Okay, sorry. Good morning. All right, so, all right. Thank you for sharing as soon as you come on. I forget about that. Good morning, everybody. Let me clean my glasses out. So, um, don't forget, Sunday School will be at 3 o'clock for those of you who join us for Sunday School. Sunday School will be at 3 o'clock this coming Sunday. We'll be honoring our pastor at 4 p.m. So Sunday School is at 3 instead of 9 a.m. this Sunday. And we hope that you'll join us at 3 o'clock as we look into the Word of the Lord. Then, um, so... I will, I don't know that I'll do anything prior to that, but certainly if you get a chance, join us for Sunday school, Sunday morning at Sunday evening at three. All right, let's get started. Good morning, everybody. Looking at Exodus chapter seven, verse 16, we see <clears throat> the Lord gives instructions again to Moses. Go over. All right, Missionary Green, I saw that y'all were down there in Biloxi. Y'all passed right through my neck of the woods, I think. I think, I don't know. But if y'all do, I won't be, you just let me know if y'all passing through Hattiesburg. Maybe y'all can stop and say, hey. So in verse 16, the Lord tells Moses, go back to Pharaoh. And this is what you're going to do. God says it's not enough for Pharaoh just to have a hard heart. I'm going to start showing a mighty hand. And you know, when we look at the progression of what God does, God isn't going to just, God starts with small things. And we may say it's not a small thing, but it's a small thing because of what God does. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Here, he says, I think you have my number, so text me. He says, and thou shalt say unto him, unto Pharaoh, the Lord God of the Hebrews hath sent me unto thee, saying, let my people go that they may serve me in the wilderness. And behold, hitherto thou wouldest not hear. So the Lord says, in this thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will smite with the rod that is in mine hand upon the waters which are in the river, and they shall be turned to, to blood. So you have God. Good morning, Mother Flemings. The Lord said, Fleming, the Lord says to Mo, says, the, tells Moses to tell Pharaoh, I'm going to, 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 to smite the water. I'm going to cause this water to be turned to blood. That's what God says. God wasn't trying to impress Pharaoh. Let's get that clear. God was not trying to impress Pharaoh, though Pharaoh act like he was supposed to be impressed. God was not trying to impress Pharaoh. So one of the, in my mama's old Bible, it says a little different. So here it says that Pharaoh was not impressed. Let's read. In verse 18, and the fish that is in the river shall die and the river shall stink and the Egyptians shall loathe to drink of the water of the river. And the Lord spake unto Moses, say unto Aaron, Aaron, take thy rod and stretch out thine hand upon the waters of Egypt and upon their streams, upon their rivers and upon their ponds and upon their pools of water that they may become blood. And that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. And Moses and Aaron did so as the Lord commanded. And he lifted up the rod and smote the waters that were in the river, in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants. And all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. Now, 
God is clear. God begins the be This is the beginning. It's not the end. It is the beginning of the plagues. Here it says in verse 21, and the fish that were in the river died and the river stank and the Egyptians could not drink of the water of the river and there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. Verse 22, here we have it again where we see the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments and Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Neither did he hearken unto them as the Lord had said. So God said, there he's, Pharaoh's not going to listen, but you do it anyway. There's something about our just being obedient to what God says. See, we think that somehow if we do what God says, it just produces automatic uh, response. The, the, the thing is this, we just need to obey God because God knows what he's doing. It's not about us. It's about our being obedient to what God says. Here, the Lord says, Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Neither did he hearken unto them as the Lord had said. Verse 23, and Pharaoh turned and went into his house. Neither did he set his heart to this also. You have, good morning, need, and you look at this. Pharaoh was causing such turmoil for his people. He was fine as long as his magicians could do the same thing because he's still saying, who is this God? My magicians can do what your God can do. My magicians can do what your God can do. My magicians can do what your God can do. He's not any greater than me. He's not any greater than me. Because he's trying to parallel himself to God. And there are people now who believe that as long as they can do what the church can do, as long as they can do what you can do, it doesn't change the fact that God still is greater. He still is the greater one. See, they're comparing themselves to the wrong thing. They're trying to be same thing that Satan did with in the Garden of Eden. And back then, he want people want to be like God. Pharaoh was no different. All he was doing was filling up his cup so that God could raise judgment against him. We have to be careful of our motives and of our heart. Pharaoh turned and went into his house. Neither did he set his heart to this also. And all the Egyptians digged about round the about the river for water to drink, but they could not drink of the water of the river. So it made their lives harder because here they could not drink the water from the place they normally could, they had to dig wells. I'm going to read from my mama's Bible just a minute. And seven days, and the seven days were fulfilled. After that, the Lord had spin the river. So God wasn't going to keep it that way. He was trying to show them something. He was trying to show them something. He was trying to show them something. He was trying to show Pharaoh something. Let me read this to you. I wonder, but before we go to the next plague, God started with something. He wasn't through. Good morning, everybody. He says, this is, we started at verse 14, but I want to go to verse 15. So here, well, I think I started at verse 14. Verse 16. Let's read that. I want, I got a little time. He says to them, say to him, Jehovah, the God of the Hebrews has sent me back to demand that you let his people go to worship him in the wilderness. You wouldn't listen before. And now the Lord says this, you're going to find out that I am God. For I have instructed Moses to hit the water of the Nile with his rod and the river will turn the, to blood. Hmm. The fish will die and the river will stink. So your source of income also the, and your source of food, the fish are going to die and the water is going to, your source of existence, the river, you can't, you're not going to be able to float in that. 
You're not going to be able to use that river. You're not going to get the things everywhere you look. There's going to be blood, but they're going to be able to dig down and have a well, but you're going to have a hardship. That's all right. And the Lord says, you're going to find out that I am God. He says, the fish will die. The river will sting so that the Egyptians will be unwilling to drink it. So he was making a hardship for his people, but it didn't matter because he refused pride. Here, then the Lord instructed Moses, tell Aaron to point his rod toward the waters of Egypt, all its rivers, canals, marshes, reservoirs, even the water stored in bowls and pots. So you had in their houses water turning into blood. Hmm. So Moses did and Aaron did as the Lord commanded, as Pharaoh and all his officials watched. You know what? The thing is, as we read on, even his officials caught a clue before Pharaoh did. They said, you know, it's something to this. We might need to rethink this. Pharaoh didn't agree. As Pharaoh and all his officials watched, Aaron hit the surface of the Nile with the rod and the river turned to blood. Can you imagine standing there and seeing this? The fish died and the water became so foul that the Egyptians couldn't drink it. And there was blood throughout the land of Egypt. But then the, the magicians of Egypt used their secret arts and they too turned water into blood. So Pharaoh's heart remained hardened, hard and stubborn, and he wouldn't listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had predicted. And he returned to his palace unimpressed. He acted like he was supposed to be impressed. God was just giving him a warning. He was just giving him a little foreplay to say, you need to make a change. Then the Egyptians dug wells along the riverbank to get drinking water, for they couldn't drink from the river. Verse 25 says, the following week, the Lord said to Moses, going into verse eight, go in again to Pharaoh and tell him, let my people go and worship me. And then he starts the next plague. God is clear. I'm giving you warning. And sometimes we miss the warning because it appears to not be significant enough. Sometimes people miss it because it hasn't impacted their lives enough. God warns us. He warns us beforehand, giving us ample time to deal with and to change. Lord, help us to see it and change. Help us to make the change. Help us to make the change because God will warn us in advance to prepare. Exactly, Sister Janet. Listen, I'm going to stop there before we get to the second plague because the second plague is where God ups it just a little bit. He ups it just a little bit, right? Warning comes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. God gives warning. And sometimes we just miss it. We don't want to miss anything. And he did believe in his magicians. That if his magicians can do it, that was sufficient enough. And even, y'all know the story. So even at the end, when he let them go, he came after them again. But God's plan was to ultimately destroy Pharaoh. And you know how it ended. He did. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for what you're showing us and revealing to us in this scripture. Help us to hear your voice and to follow. Don't let us miss the signs. Don't let us miss the warnings. Don't let us be caught up in following the crowd so much or even following our own selves, that we miss what you're saying. Help us to obey you and to believe what you say to us. We bless your excellent name. Father, we ask you to protect us over this, this weekend. Protect us during this day. Protect us as we travel and go where we're going. We thank you in advance that your, your peace will guard our hearts and our minds. 
We honor you now. Give us testimonies. Protect our children. We thank you for your hand being upon us for good. Thank you that no weapon formed against us will prosper. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. So it is. Amen. All right. We got to go. I pray that the Lord will bless you over this weekend. They will protect you and guide you. Let's not. Right, Elder Ingram. We don't want to be a Pharaoh. We want to be the ones who see what God is saying and obey what his word tells us. All right, everybody. Listen, don't forget to share the video. Type in Catch the Replay. Hashtag Graced for today. God bless all of our young people. I pray the Lord will bless them and keep them. His hand would be upon them and he will give them peace. Y'all pray for somebody else. And uh, I hope that you will join me on Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m. for Sunday school. And then Monday morning, as of course, as we continue to talk about the distinction. All right. All right. God bless everybody. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and join me Monday morning at 7.15 a.m. Central Time. Until then, remember this time spent in the word of God is never wasted in you. Have been graced for today. Have a great day, everybody. Peace.